This week on the Push All Those Podcast, we talk about five simple things for trainers and clients to do in the new year. Three, two, one. Where's your wardrobe gone, Dan? <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the Push Pull Legs podcast with myself, Dan Eek. And me, Tom Hall. What's going on, bro? It's gone, mate. I had to get rid of it. I had <laughs> to get rid of it. Yeah. So, yeah. That's I had to sell it. That's... Dan needs clients. You have to sell his wardrobe. I know. I need so many clients. <laughs> I have to get rid of my wardrobe. Tom, lend me some from your penthouse, please. All right, yeah. Because we, oh. we all know your wardrobes are just made of cash. This, got a, what this is annoying because um, Chloe started saying this to me as well. So she's just gone, all right, penthouse, Tom. It's like, brilliant. Yeah, what's going on? Not a lot, mate. Not a lot. Busy day today. Filmed a lot with Mike. Saw Mike for the first time since before Christmas. So that was always good. Um, and yeah, what else did we do? Ate some vegan food, which oh, sure. was interesting. Well, uh, can't reveal any spoilers because that's on a YouTube video. You have to watch that another time. Um, and yeah, nothing nothing else, really. Everything's all good. I feel like I'm back in the swing of things now with it being you know, middle of January. Slowly getting back into it. <laughs> That's the, the classic of every single person I've spoke to in the gym. Yeah, just getting back into it. You've been getting back into it for the last four years. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's that phrase. I'm like, mm, really? Have you got back into it? Are you enjoying my lights, by the way? No, I can't even see them because you've blurred your background, so it's fine. Oh, ah, there should be. Uh, 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 really... uh, again, we've been playing with the uh, Skype uh stuff functions yeah um and snapshotting so. so the other thing i did as well actually i is over the weekend is that i was starting to research how much it would cost to have a home gym when i moved yeah because yeah, i was thinking about it. i was like looking at it i was like oh, i can't be i don't think i'd be bothered to join a gym that's like a drive away 20 minute drive whatever i know i realize for most people that's probably common but yeah. i'm a bit like mm, if i could have the space in my garage like if all i needed was like we we also spot. have like yeah the kind of blessing of knowing it we could get away with limited amount of equipment. Exactly. I think that's it. So I was like looking at it yeah. going, right, what do I need? I was like, right, if I had a squat rack with a barbell, I've got adjustable dumbbells that are all right. Yeah. I've got, if you've got a landmine and a bench, you could probably do a lot of stuff with that. Like if you've got a decent handle for the end of the landmine, you know, yeah. you could probably get away with half of that sort of stuff and maybe a cable stack. I was like, you've probably got everything covered there. And I was like, for the cost of that, I was like, it would yeah it would last a while i'd be happy with it i'd probably use it more than i would an actual gym yeah um, but yeah no it's just i just that's what i did the weekend none of, none of those awkward kind of walking around naked in the changing rooms like you normally do no, i do it all the time. i just walk around the gym naked mate <laughs> so true be um, awkward, yeah, be awkward. So that's why i can't go back um, <laughs> I know, that was it mate how about you uh what have i done since when did i speak to you last don't know. I don't know, man. I don't keep record of it. I just try and erase it from my mind. Um, yeah. I'll check. I'll check my journal. Um, I'm not too sure. You probably but went for a burger at some point. I went to a burger today. Um, oh, well, Thanks. I've been calorie tracking since the second of January, which is pretty good. That's a long time for me. Hey, that just is... tracking your calories doesn't make doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah, okay. eating six thousand a day. <laughs> That's losing weight. Okay. Oh, okay. Been uh, chopping down a little bit. I came. I've gone from what was my day? Was it? Yeah. Uh, essentially, I backed off a little bit. Um, but I did did that classic manoeuvre, one of those advanced advanced diet manoeuvres, down of borrowing calories from a different day. Strategic refeed or something like that. So yeah. people just call it a refeed. I, I just wanted a burger. What we call, we call it? Let's call it a strategic refeed. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> even though my weight went up. Um, yeah, it's gone down from, what was I, post-Christmas. All, even I, I felt a little bit like, pff, flabby, I guess, as you do, eating and drinking everything inside. Just after Christmas or...? Oh, brilliant. Uh, um, mate, you can keep up with me in the gym. Shut up. I can't, mate. Mass, mass <laughs> move to mass, mate. Do you know what I mean? Mass <laughs> move like, to mass. That's what I say most of the time. Um, but what was I? 87.7 I weighed in after. So you've got the... 11 kilos on me. So... And then I weighed in at 84.6 today. Actually, on Saturday, I was 84 flat. So I'll be, that'll go up again. I'll be back in the 85s by tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, back up. Like, what, but what, yeah, that's uh, 10 days I guess almost 3 kilos but I'm guessing a kilo of that is just like pfft, of some crap um, all the alcohol that I just shitted out Ooh. probably mate yeah you're going in it what, what, what do you think the calories I'm at, I'm at what have I given myself 
You've probably given yourself 2,600. Very close. 2,800. Oh, come on, man. You can go more aggressive than that. I can. But um, I like food. I actually really enjoy eating. (laughs) And and I know I can pretty much drop off diet wise on about 3,000 very Mm. comfortably. So, yeah. Yeah. It's funny, actually. We've talked about this before, me and Mike, and it's kind of like with dieting now, I don't know what it is. That about it that I feel really like it's gonna sound really bad. It's gonna sound really bad. But like like most of what you say is so you yeah, well, no, I know. But it's almost like around me. it's almost like it's not a challenge. Like I I just know what it takes to do it. You know, some people like they revel in the challenge of doing something or whatever. And like, I just feel like it's like, yeah, I could lose a little bit of body fat, but not like not ridiculous amounts. But it just it just wouldn't be difficult. I, it doesn't like I, I think that's half it. It's not really. A I challenge. know what you mean, but that's that's because I I'm quite similar to you. I've just been like so. Obviously, my clients have been like, oh, you've you, you've lost that much in that short amount of time. Like, yeah, are you that disciplined? I'm like, yeah, because that's what I want to do. What to expect. I, just, like, I think because you know what to expect with the hunger. You know what to expect with like the decrease in performance and energy levels and stuff. And I, I, I go because I've done it a few times. I go back into a, a, a routine massively i was like yeah. my breakfast is exactly yeah. Yeah. my my lunch is always like soup based with a bit of protein and then i always leave myself quite a lot of calories for the evening because i like to eat in the evening so mm-hmm. and oh what i have been doing daniel is uh, i've gone through the full range of the ben and jerry's um lighter stuff mm-hmm. i've eaten one of those nearly every day for the last week <laughs> Pretty good. Only on one day that I did did I do half, and I was like, oh, I should really stop now. Um, so I felt a little bit sick, but was, that was like five days in. Um, but yeah, I've done the full range of that. It's pretty good. The uh, the salted caramel brownie one is pretty decent. Um, but they definitely do rival the uh, the good Halo stuff. They're 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 quite similar because the calories are six hundred and eighty ish, six mm. seven per tub, I believe. Um, so yeah, it's not too bad. And yeah, for, I just like, wouldn't. I can save that up, right? Or yeah. just have half, and it's only three twenty, I guess, three forty. Yeah, somewhere. yeah. No, it's just, weird. I just think it's weird. Like, it's just weird. How I, I just feel as well. Like, if you're if you're happy and comfortable with your physique and you're comfortable with how you look, I, it just it's not as it's just not as much of a thing. I, but I knew after Christmas. Up, I just knew after Christmas that going back to eating how I normally eat, I would the weight would come off. Like, yeah. I, I barely put anything on over Christmas. Like again, I'm one of these people that I'm lucky that. My appetite is quite well regulated by my calories. I, I'm not one of those people that just. My appetite is regulated by going out a lot, mm. eating out generally. If I don't, oh, but obviously Chloe's been away for a few weeks, so I probably I haven't eaten out as much, especially in this new year. So probably today I've only eaten out twice, maybe. Uh, probably the current it's, it's 100% London living. For anybody who has yeah. a go at me, yeah. um, <laughs> that I might on a normal week eat out three, four times a week. I like, think if I lived in London, it would be I would be a lot. I would probably diet more often, or I'd think more about that sort of thing. I think living where I live, I'm a lot. I'm very lucky that if I buy it and it's in the house, that I obviously eat it. But it's a lot harder to go out. Although Five Guys is coming to Bath, so that will change things. That will change. Yeah. Um, you've, you've already got Laura and Isabel's jobs lined up, right? Yeah, yeah. The only time, <laughs> the only time I do eat out is when Mike, when I go to see Mike, or Mike comes down here. It's the only time we eat out really. Um, we went to have a breakfast of the day. Me and Laura and Isabel went out for breakfast, but I that was it, like yeah. once a week maybe, and that's it's getting. I was, I'd, I'd, I'd incredibly, uh, I was incredibly jealous because it did look nice though, and I was like, I was just having like some scrambled eggs. But yeah, it was mushrooms in cooked in truffle butter with poached mm-hmm. eggs, and I added black pudding because that's quality. Well, black pudding um, great, and it was just like really really nice. I'm gonna have that again if I go back, but um, but like you said, it's that routine, isn't it? Monday to Friday, you just eat the same things. Like I yeah. just eat egg whites and eggs on a bagel for breakfast for lunch i'll have some sort of really boring ham wrap or ham sandwich something with protein with a yogurt that's like it and that's all i eat during the day like i just eat protein, yeah. protein and that and for dinner i have what i want and it means that over the course of the week i've built up a, a bit of a deficit probably and i eat, and again it's little things like i eat like i have like a bag of fruit pastas in the car so when i go in the car i'll sit there and munch on some fruit pastas. what was your but, thing last week you were like um was it drops is it gummy drops I can make it a comeback. Jelly, jelly tops. Jelly tops, no. thank you. Yeah, Isabel had a packet of jelly tops. She didn't want them, and I was like, these are really good. Uh, um, <laughs> so, yeah, by now, apparently, jelly yeah. tops are making a comeback. 
Well, no, I had them, and they were in the fridge because they were in a selection box. Yeah, you said that. You were like, you need to make them cold, right? Wow, that made a difference, by the way. Yeah. Anyway, we've gone well off topic here. <laughs> I can't remember so, what we're talking about. It's all right. It's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, what we meant to be talking about. So um, it's kind of a January show, right? I guess we need to talk about people's it, goals. It is January. It is January, yeah. Um, people's goals, etc. cetera. Um, yeah. That kind of thing. As a quick note, I think uh, Josh Silverman will probably announce it at some point. But uh, I think him, myself, and uh, a couple of the, like Henry and Carl and some some wonderful people um, and Third Space will be speaking at Elevate London this year. If if you want to put that in your calendars, I've no idea when it is. Um, <laughs> at some point through the middle of the year, I'm going to go definitely between March and August. Just be free, guys, okay? Just be free. <laughs> be free. Nice if you want to see us, it's. I'm pretty sure the event is free to go to. Um, so if you want to go down, it's. it'll be at the XL in uh, London. Oh, the XL, eh? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I might talk. Um, I, I put forward to Josh to talk a vegan uh, a vegan versus meat uh, like topic panel. I was like, that'd be cool. There he, there he is now. Um yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, though. It'd just get frustrating because the and vegan I, person I know, would take over. I, I've already seen one of the titles, and I 100% know he's putting me on that panel, and it's a movements versus muscles thing. I was like, brilliant. It's just going to be an argument of me versus me and Josh, basically, which is what happens in our meetings anyway. So. Yeah. Great. Just what we want. But we respect each other, that's why. Is that it, is it? Ah, yeah, you'll listen to this as well. So it's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> As if he still listens to this. Surely he's got better he things does, to do. He does. He does. He quoted me this morning on it. I was like, did I say that? <laughs> How has he not got better things to be doing with his time? Josh, he goes to bed at like nine o'clock. Josh, turn this off, mate. Come on. You're, <laughs> you're a lot better than this. He's not, though, is he? He's the, he, he gets on his scooter. He rides a scooter around, and that's about it. He so. just wants to hear us mention RTS or talk. That's all he's waiting for. He's waiting for us to throw it in there. I'll talk. <laughs> But seriously, go go to the LDM muscle people. I think there's loads. Of, they released their new guys, haven't they? So go get guard. They did like getting hit with their adverts. Josh, oh, yeah, just stop, stop. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what we're what talking about. That's where we got our stuff from, right? I've got no chance looking that good. No chance, mate. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, it's Josh. So that's the problem. Well, that's okay, fair enough. True. <laughs> um, uh, all right, let's gonna move on. So um, we're gonna talk about a little bit of. So you, you were mentioning what trainers have been saying or what the simple stuff that maybe some people are thinking about signing up for a PT now, um, which generally happens or getting into shape um, in January for the summer, I guess. And then we can kind of, we can outline what we reckon we can get three to five. We can get three to five things or simple mm. things that you can kind of change right now, which are going to help your goals. Um, because there are some people that actually look for us educationally. Um, believe it or not, like, my um one of my best buddies little sisters has started listening so amy this is going to be educational for you and i'm pretty sure you've had a trainer for a few weeks and uh i'm sorry if they've done any of the things that we've badmouthed um no no i'm not sorry i'm not sorry for badmouthing shit practice all right it's not there we go that's from them yeah not bad mouth, no. like, so i this is i this is just again totally off topic because that's what we do here um yeah, I, I, I kind of have this We're thing with yeah. I kind of have this thing you know like the old saying like if you don't have anything nice to say don't say anything at all right again agreed if you're going to go on a personal attack yeah. right if you're going to be personal and you're going to attack someone but if you attack information or bad practice and that leads to you not coming across nice but you're not actually picking out any flaws in someone's personality just in the information that they're giving out because it's incorrect that is not yeah. the same thing let's just Snowflakes. do that snowflakes that happens right. in me, our industry me calling me calling tom a twat right is very different to me saying tom's methodology training methodologies are flawed or are useless that's very different tom might be a very nice person even his methodologies are flawed neither of those two are correct <laughs> he is a twat but just to highlight the point right there's a difference between calling someone out and calling them there's a difference there's a difference right fundamentally um because I, I always find it hard to tread that line between being someone that calls out bullshit and attacking the bullshit versus attacking someone in their personality like i don't ever wish ill on anyone who gives out bad advice or bad practice or anything like that unless they really are causing people to be ill or whatever um but i just think it's useful to highlight bad information which is what we're doing here right we're not calling out any in specific trainer it's just bad trainers as a collective 
by their methodology, right? And if you associate with them, then you are one. Massive disclaimer there, right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you went off on one way. Um, yeah, so well, you started talking about body part splits. Yeah, I talked about it today on my on my. So stories. topic number one, body part splits. If what, you've got, what, a, if your trainer is yeah giving you a body part split and you're only training, let's say uh, not six times a week, they probably shouldn't be doing this. Now, even if you are training six times a week, they shouldn't be doing it. Regard no no personal trainer with one client should ever do a body part split, and I'm gonna hammer hat on that and say yeah. that. So, yeah. but those that don't know what body part split is, body part split is where you do like chest one day, back the next day, then you do legs, then you do shoulders, then you do arms, then you do like abs and calves, and then you rest, and then you do redo it all again over the week, right? Is there that many exercises for calves? No, but they're lumped together usually with abs and calves. It's like a rest sl- rest day slash abs and calves is what they always put. Because anyway. I'd be like, all right, you're doing like plyo stuff. You're going to do some like bounds, and that'd be calf work, right? Yeah, well, I'm not to these lot, but the reason I'm running <laughs> about this is because obviously I saw an IFBB pro selling training plans and he was selling all of his combined plans, back, chest, shoulders, arms, all the workouts for each body part as like a bundle ah. thing, you know, obviously. Is a bundle? <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, and yeah, it's just that whole thing of if you've got one hour a week to train with your PT, or let's say you go twice a week and you do two sessions and they have you doing six to seven exercises all for the same muscle group or the same limb, yeah. run a mile, get a new PT, right? ridiculous. The only caveat to that is if you're doing lower day, I will accept that you may only work one limb, but even on lower day, I'd like to see some core work thrown in as well. So, um, but yeah, I just think it, it's just that whole concept of like, you need to do six, to seven exercises, four sets on each thing of, arms or shoulders and you just do you know raises upon raises upon raises upon presses 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 whatever and that whole thing of like oh yeah you shouldn't be able to walk out the gym after leg day you should you definitely should be able to like ridiculous um and just trying to hammer you with that much volume that you need to be sore and i've heard it before from pts and they say things like um oh yeah i've got to make sure that they're really feeling it otherwise they won't want to come back because they won't feel like they've worked Mm, not true um and things like, oh, you've got to make them, you know, you've got to make them really sweat loads at the end of the session so they want to come back. You've got to do a finisher and all that sort of thing. And it's like all these things like you have to, you've got to. It's like, no, no, you don't have to. It depends on each client, individual client, all that sort of stuff. Um, but even as a PT, it's your job. Even if someone comes in and says they want to do a body part split, it's your job as a PT to get them the best results possible. And if you know doing a body part split is not the best way possible, you need to find a way of giving them what they want in their session but also giving them what they need alongside it. So you can still do like a shoulder day, but you can also incorporate within it maybe some core work, maybe some other like movements that they maybe need to practice or need to get better at stretches, whatever. I'll even let you off that if you really want to, you know, make sure that you're giving them a plan that they are looking forward to doing or whatever. But ultimately, it's your job to make sure that they are doing what's best for them. You're the professional. You're the professional. They're not. And it just frustrates me seeing in this day and age PT still doing body part splits like that. And I don't, I said, don't care what people say. Mm, I don't. Um, but it's not optimal for anyone. It's not. It's just not an optimal way to train whatsoever. Um, and if that's the way you currently are training, please, please change how you train and hit each muscle group more than once a week. And don't just have one day doing shoulders. <laughs> Because you're gonna hurt yourself. Yeah, because you're, you're gonna hurt yourself. You're gonna end up with like like a classic. When when the chaps do this, right, they end up with some like some sort of chromio cavicular like inflammation, right? So that's your your little joint that you got your clavicle, your collarbone. For those of you that know what that means, that just means fucking your shoulders really. <laughs> you got so you got every, every chap who's benched too much will know that when they got their collarbone, and then you got right at the end of it, you got a little knobbly bit, and that gets a little knobbly knobbly bit. It's got a, a thing called a bursa. It's a bit fatty in it, and you get something called bursitis or like tendinopathy and all this all this crap, right? And that's generally happens from the body part split um, because you put way too much volume on something in one session or one day, and guess what? It don't recover. It will recover by yeah, hundred like seven days, hundred percent. But you haven't elicited any change because it's have too much recovery. So you killed it, and it's got to like bring it back to life. You got to revive it every single time. It's not like just gradually training it up and getting it stronger, mm, nothing happened. Because the, the chances are, if you're training for hypertrophy, the 
the literature would say that you probably train it every 48 hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just one of those things where like... It is, right? You could, you could do the same thing. So, um, and for example, so Dan knows how I train. I don't even do upper lower splits. I do full body, full body, full body, like all the time. But I probably looked at it more power development, speed development and stuff like that. That's how I tend to work, which if people want to sign up for their mentorship they're gonna learn right so yeah and i think it's that whole like the whole analogy like i know it's done in a different way um i know the analogy is different because it's the whole like it doesn't matter how many times have you heard that analogy it doesn't matter how many times you press the button for the lift it's not going to come any faster and there's the whole <laughs> analogy about like women and whatever i yeah. wouldn't know what they mean i wouldn't know what that means anything about yeah, that yeah, I'll, let you, um, I'll let you know after the show right? oh cheers mate i don't know what it means but anyway <laughs> it, it works for muscle synthesis so basically once you've trained a certain number of sets at a certain percentage of weight lifted you've basically pressed the button like you basically pressed it. Like doing more, pressing it more times, doing more is not going to help you. Well, the, the biggest, the biggest uh, like thing for that was uh, the discreditation of GVT, wasn't it? German volume training. I'm going to kill everybody here. Like the ten sets of ten, just fucking made up. There's no science. And then they disproved it. And they're like, actually, five sets of this is the same effect <laughs> and yeah, it's yeah. detrimental. Yeah, just <laughs> just like, wasted. You're just wasting all that time and effort. Wasted so much time and effort. And like, and that, and that was my thing <laughs> about my what I posted on Instagram was it was that thing of it's just you, it's just a waste of time. Like you're just wasting time. And and someone someone replied to it and were like. Um, or what if someone enjoys doing that way and they enjoy doing that? And I was like, crack on. I was like, if you enjoy it and you think you're getting results, crack on. I was like, regardless, you will get better results training twice a week, regardless. But I know that there are far more people out there who do that sort of split, who don't want to be in the gym five times a week, but are just doing it because they've been told they need to do it. Yeah. They don't actually enjoy training one body part for the whole session because they don't. Maybe they don't train well enough. They don't train hard enough, but also no variety in it. And they actually would rather train three times a week full body because it's less time in the gym. They're going to get better results. And it's this whole thing that people have this obsession with. If they're in the gym, they're burning calories. They think this. They think that if they're in the gym doing all those sets, all those reps, they're burning more calories. Uh, Weight training is not in your program or is not part of your life to burn calories. Like That's number one. It's not there to do that. You burn far more calories while you're asleep for two, three hours than you do in the gym for 45 minutes. You will. Like, mm. you categorically, you will. And people go, oh, really? What are you on about? I'm like, because you burn calories just sitting there doing nothing. Like Tom said, Tom's eating 2,800 calories and he's losing weight, right? The amount of walking that Tom does around London and how, how much mass he has to carry. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of mass, mate. I'm a, I'm, he probably, he probably I'm needs to eat. 16 kilometers today. I walk. Yeah, so you probably needs to eat, say, three three and a half thousand calories to maintain his weight, right? And in the gym... It's a lot of weight. Yeah, and in the gym, he's probably burning 300 calories doing his weight training. But that's not the goal of the weight training. The weight training is there to stimulate muscle growth so that he has better shape, better toned muscles, more strength, all that sort of stuff, more power, his goals. But he's fundamentally, from just a physique point of view, he's trying to just make sure that he holds on to his muscle tissue or builds it. And there's this obsession that people think if they're in the gym for longer, they're going to burn more fat. Or if they do these supersets, they're going to burn more fat because it burns more. And it's just bullshit. It just, it just yeah. doesn't work like that. You know, I think that, so yeah, trainers doing crap to burn calories. Okay, so this should be number two. If, you're, if your trainer has to go, yeah, we're going to do a big calorie burn, just walk away. That's not the point of why you're going to the gym. That stuff, the calorie burning, is the 23 hours of the day. Even, that another you're one is the, is the hit, isn't it? It's the, oh yeah, we do this, this, this eight minute finisher, metabolic yeah. blast. Get like, your metabolism firing. No, like, no, no, no. The, the reason for doing that is intraset recovery. <laughs> so you can do more sets or a little bit more volume or recover better. So you're able to do more during the week and you're able to move around more when you're not in the gym. So that's the point of doing the HIIT training, not to burn more calories in that 15 minutes that you're doing it. It's so you are more economically better outside the gym. You, Yeah, that you burn way, far more calories... Okay. During, like you burn far more calories during the day walking around. Like I said, you will oh, two, hours, two hours, two hours of biggest thing. two it's hours biggest of walking thing. around London. There's number three. Around. There's number three right there. Go just, for a walk. Just fucking move, like seriously, <laughs> just move because people seriously underestimate how many calories they burn just moving. Like I noticed it massively since I moved from London to Bath and since I become more sedentary, my calorie intake drastically decreased. Drastically. I remember in London, I used to be the same. I could eat three and a half thousand calories, not put on a, not put on a kilo, not put on anything. And now my steps are a lot less. I probably do like seven, 8,000 a day, whereas I used to do 20,000 in London on my feet all day doing PT. And it, it massively impacts things. And 
it's not that I'm not training as well as I was then or burn as many calories. It's that that's not what you do training for. Um, and it really bugs me when I see trainers talking about calorie burning in a weight session because yeah. there, the I think it's a fear. There's a fear from trainers. And half the time it's because they're not confident in their own ability, I think. But they just don't tell their clients the truth. They like I would say to my clients all the time, like you can come here three times a week and see me. But if you do not make sure you move during the day and keep your calories under control, you will not lose any weight. You will not lose weight. I was like, I was like, I'm not a magician. The three hours <laughs> you've seen me out of the week, I was like the 140, 50, 60 hours in you've got in a week. I was like, you think, 168 you think, hours 168, in a week. Yeah, you think the three you're here is going to make a difference? Yeah. Not a chance. Not a chance. And it's that whole thing of it's what you're doing outside of that is making all difference. The stimulus in those three hours is there for you to grow muscle and to get stronger and fitter and all that sort of stuff, which is great. But unless you con- control what you're eating in the other 165 hours and what you do in terms of movement in those 165 hours, that's what dictates your results more than I ever will be in here for three hours. And I think PTs feel that they can't say that to their client because they'll realize that it's like, what am I doing here then? And it's like, no, that's not, no, that's not, not, that's not, that's not what they're, they're going to think. That's they're, not what they're going to think. No, trust me. Uh, they, they've come here because they're not confident in the gym more than likely, or they need some guidance. That's what, that's what they're there for. Um, and the yeah. PTs, PTs have got to be confident about that. And if you're super confident about that kind of thing, that you're you're able to show them exercises that they maybe they definitely wouldn't have, wouldn't have had the confidence to do by themselves, or they wouldn't have the expertise to do themselves. That's why they're paying you because they're they're and they're asking you to cut out all this other crap um, and then channel yeah. their focus. And ultimately, and, if they're seeing results, let's say you do that for six weeks, you say to them, look, you need to do all that sort of stuff outside here as well. And they see you twice a week, and they see results in those six weeks. You're going to go, yes, because of everything else you've done as well, as well as these sessions, but it's everything else you've done. Do you think if they're getting results while they're seeing you, they're going to quit because they they realize they're burning their calories outside the session? No. Be honest with them. Tell them the truth. They'll respect you a lot more if you tell them the truth than if you try and bullshit them. And then later on, they come to someone like me as a coach and then they find out you've lied to them (laughs) because I will tell them the truth. It's just I get get it regularly. I get people come to me and... Oh, I've had a PT for two years. I'm like, why are you unhappy with how you look? If you've had a PT for two years, there's no reason why you should be unhappy with how you look or your confidence or, or anything like that. Because yeah. you should be getting results with someone like for two years. You'd like to think so. Um, and again, it's because PTs aren't telling you that sort of thing outside the gym. Um, and I used to say it to some of my clients and they used to cate- they used to say back to me categorically, they're like, Dan, the reason I come here is actually because I don't want to do that. I'd rather just come in. I'm, I used to say to them, I said, well, we can't do that much work in these sessions that's going to offset all that stuff you're doing. So you make a choice. If you come here because you enjoy it and you get the endorphin release and you whatever, and you want to carry an eating and drink what you want, I'm cool with that. Just know you're not going to yeah, fit into that size six. I, I still have like. those those clients, 100%. And, it, and again, it's fine. It's amazing once you have that conversation and, with that person, yeah. how all of a sudden everyone enjoys training more because there's no expectation. Because I'm always like, I'm always like, it's it's hard, but it's simple. I was like, you know the equation. I've told you a million times. You've brought a Fitbit. You've done all this kind of stuff. And that's what we, you, you have a kind of, we worked out your probably maintenance calories. You know you need to dip under that to lose weight. You know that's happening. We've taught you how to track. And if they don't do it, then there's only so much I can do. But if they still enjoy the sessions and they still want to come in and they're still getting stronger, then yeah, all good for them. Right? That's, 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 that's what my job's about, um, So, which is great. So I think people having confidence to do that and realizing that the client actually has to do some of the work and you're there to guide them, not to do it for them, um, which is a big one, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so you shouldn't be feeling as guilty as as long as you've done your job correctly. And other if other clients are following your advice and losing weight and getting to their goals, and you're feeling guilty about a few others, then the chances are you're like, have I done everything the same as these people? Mm. Yes. All right, it's not you. <laughs> yeah, I just think it's it's again, it's fucking showing our age here, aren't we? To be fair, but I've never ever I've never ever had a bad comeback from a client because I showed them I cared about them. Yeah. the amount of times i've had a client just say oh thanks for being honest with me and even yeah. if they could like, i've had i've had i've had difficult conversations with online clients before who and i've had to take a hit on my income because i've said to them i don't think it's worth you carrying on because you're not doing this this and this like you know you, you've obviously got other stuff going on that's more important i've kind of helped you with this i've kind of done what i can but ultimately things aren't really working out i think we've the both amount of times, yeah. the amount of times months later they come back and go dan you were right i wasn't in a great place but now i'm in a great place 
I, you know, I really respect the fact you said that to me and I really want to work with you again. They're, they're going to be far better than you doing something that, you know, trying to keep them or trying to string them along or trying to, you know, what that sort of stuff. And then they realise you did that and then they're never going to come back to work with you or never going to say that many nice things. And I just think it's... Same with, with, with Peter, I never got a back, I never got backlash from any client by showing them that I cared about them. That's the yeah, thing, right? I think I, I had it with um, one of my online guys, and he was like, I'll still pay you. I was like, no, I'll just put you on a retainer fee, that's fine. I was like, pay me like a coffee, I'll see me a coffee a month for the next like four months. I was like, you sort out your life, I was like, with your job and everything like that, because you are miserable. The last thing I want to be doing is chucking body stress at you. Yeah. I was just like, you just, you do you. Here's, I was like, here's a bodybuilding program that's just like full body twice a week. Do that. Don't care about the way it's just move. Cool. And he's like, all right, then sort it back. Then come back out. Come back out, but it's fine. And I get it. And I get it's hard. And I get that when you start out, it's hard with you, if you haven't got many clients and all that sort of thing. But yeah. I just think, just show you care and be a human and stuff and you'll be, be fine. Yeah. All right. Number four. One of the ones for me, this is be me, because this is a big thing uh, in terms of selling points, and I feel like where in-person PT sells their services is, and I was teaching, so I've done this on the last couple of PT1 courses, and if these ever come really available to like other trainers outside first place, that I 100% do it, um, is movement prep and warm-up based stuff. And I feel like in my job, that's especially is like we come from SNC, right? That's where we make our money. That's where I get my buy-in from my client, and that's where I get the most kind of change in person's movement quality. And I feel like I don't even maybe with a little bit of load chucked in every now and then, a goblet, a kettlebell, something like that, um, is the movement prep phase. So all those kind of I don't know lungy stuff Dan refuses to do because he didn't want to look. He was too cool uh, to do it when uh, <laughs> I was doing it. You didn't want to jump, did you? You're like, I'm not jumping. Uh, so you're bounding, you do, mate. I don't bounding, like bounding like, oh, shit. <laughs> the lunges, the walking throughs, all this kind of stuff. It takes, and get, having the confidence to say that I don't need to hit. So I'll do like, when when we train together, right? I, I, what did I pick? Like three, like one tricep and two supersets, right? That we did, I mm-hmm. think. Something like that. It was super quick, though. We probably did all of those in 10 minutes each, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then I would say my, I was talking to, and they were like, what? That, that's all it took for me um, 10 minutes to do your basically like fundamental movement stuff and 10 10 free accessory work and i was like i spent on average this will maybe shock people in terms of personal training i spend on average between 20 to 30 minutes in warm-up and movement prep phases which is which i think every single time when somebody says i spend half my session warming someone up they're like what? Like, what you why and i'm like because i feel like i'm getting the bang for my buck and i'm warming somebody up properly and they they're burning their calories um i use air quotes F- fyi this there um and i'm getting the person move better and feeling better which is number one of my goal that's half my session i want them to do and then the other half i'm gonna load some stuff that they just probably did in the warmer um so that's my thing having confidence maybe your personal trainer needs and i don't mean warm up by like oh they're on a treadmill five minutes then we're going on the cross trainer for five minutes and they're like, Tom, anybody can do that. That's fifteen minutes gone already. I'm like, brilliant. Yeah, I think I think that I think <laughs> that I think that also comes from your experience level and the also also the length of time you've been with your clients. Yeah, maybe. I would suggest because I think there's a massive difference between what you do with people like that to what people currently do as PTs, which is five minutes on the treadmill. Yeah. Like, like if you took some it's of those people that did five minutes, that you did that. To be fair, most of them would find it as if it was a workout anyway, the majority of them. And I think that's the, only, that's the other thing with you is, like, is you've got to remember, is the movement prep warm-up, when you say that, you're, I know what you mean and what you're saying, but I also know, having seen it and know what you do, that actually in the client's shoes, the last 15 minutes of that is like a session because they're sweating, it's, there's no rest, that like they're moving well, they're yeah. balancing on one leg, they're moving one leg, they're lunging. For a lot of people, that's that's working out and stuff like it's, that. I think it is 100% workout, yeah. There's, there's a difference between... There's a difference between, and the, the, I don't know if any of you listened to that and caught it, but I, again, I know the nuances of what Tom's talking about. But what you'll notice is he said loaded. So that doesn't mean that the movement prep warm up isn't hard or what you could even consider resistance training, because ultimately there was, there was body weight that he would be using. And again, the positions these people are going to be in, there's core work involved, single leg work, stability, movement that 
for majority of our clients would be resistance training. And then he said, my loaded bit would be 30 minutes. And that's what he's referring to there as the loading element to it. So bounding and jumping for a lot of clients requires just as much thought process and mm-hmm. effort and hard work as, as loading does. And I think most people wouldn't have caught what you said that and how you said it. And it's worth mentioning that because what you don't mean is like sat on a mat doing a quad stretch or a hamstring stretch like that no. because that's not what it is and, and i think there's a massive difference between a quality trainer taking someone through a movement prep um exercises for 20 30 minutes to the generic warm-up that you see most people do because i think right. with what you did or what you do i would suggest the first five minutes is what we would consider a warm-up the first one is is, it is it's like it's you know it's um like hip rotations it's it's static sort of i suppose reaching thoracic mobility work that kind of thing bit of foam rolling you did but then after that it was all pretty much you weren't resting at any point shall shall i list i can i can get this up pretty rapidly okay so i can list a uh and I think that also comes with the experience that you've got of knowing your clients and knowing to run through things and what things they need and stuff like that. Because what I would hate is people listening to this and go, oh, I'm going to so warm up my I've, clients for 20, 30 minutes. And it's like, yeah, but it doesn't mean like, right, hold a quad stretch, hold a... So, yeah, for an in, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure... So um, I train one of Dan's nutrition clients, right? And I've sent you the one of her phases. And the one of the warm-ups is on there for um her full body stuff okay so if i go through this so warm-ups so we've got one two three four five. Oh, you mean the program you sent me and i just give to all my clients that yeah one. that one okay. so everybody's got it now um everyone, cause everyone, cause everyone <laughs> a single mic every single one of my clients is doing a dumbbell snatch every single one of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah fuck me can you imagine how oh, my god oh, <laughs> like, i would love to see videos of that i'd like to see you do one jesus christ one two yeah. three yeah. four yeah. five <laughs> six <laughs> Um, seven, eight. I got eight phases during my warm up. Woo, bloody hell. So I know it's crazy, right? Um, and it's just listed warm up, and then there's still enough exercises. There. Uh, and uh, the feedback I always get, okay, no, whether uh, and yeah, it's, it's annoying, but it's like, how the hell do you fit that into one session, into one hour? I mean, I just do. It's just that it comes second nature. I, I've realized that the first few weeks of maybe doing some of this stuff with certain clients is slow. And you probably have to cut out stuff. But you pick the top six things to do, maybe. And you're like, bam, 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 bam. Once they get comfortable, that becomes automotive. So I do like a retest, test kind of theory thing. So it's about um, certain queuing systems that they use. Super cool. Really cool. Nerdy, yeah? Um, but you could literally go, so rolling out. So I expect somebody to do this like automotively, basically, if they want to come and roll out. Yeah, we don't know the literature. Yeah, it's not. It cannot be great. Um, we don't know what elicits change. Something happens. Don't really know what happens. So they can roll out. They've probably got certain things that they need to roll out. In my opinion, what I want them to do, just so they're in a better mental state to train more than anything else. Um, whether it's done anything, don't know. But if they've got a hip issue, I ask them to go roll on that hip. Chances are they're going to feel like that's a little bit better. So there's a minute, um, and then. I do some like supine breathing drills or quadruple breathing drills. So they probably need me for that. Um, they don't have to. That's kind of bringing them out of their environment of where they're working. They maybe do sandbag breathing. So that's just a cueing thing. Shove a sandbag on your tummy. You might hold like a bridge position or something. And you, you have to forcibly breathe, not forcibly, breathe so the sandbag moves. Simple. Um, six or seven breaths of that. Pretty fired up. Um, hamstrings are lit. Then it'll be some sort of like stretch. Stretch. A stretch stretch protocol. what's a stretch a stretch protocol so it made my like i don't know 99 positions i have a go at people problem in the fitness injury daniel this is a big one for stretching um why the fuck do we spend so much time air quotes opening the hips and we never spend any time closing the hips i do Cool. I do the I do the I do the one where you're on you know the ninety ninety rolling across and back yeah. in and but, yeah, yeah. But the ninety ninety one. If anybody's looking for any kind of um, yeah hip mobility, just do that. Like because you've got inter internal rotation is the thing that a lot of people lack and it sucks. Okay, and they tend to butcher and yeah like push the hell out of external rotation which was just the classic like pigeon pose kind of thing and they yeah. spend ages there and then you never do it the other way 
guess what? The hip goes the other way. So yeah. I was like, don't do it the other way in a pigeon pose. That's not her. Do it in a 90-90 on the back leg and force that to kind of lift up. Um, yeah. Do a little bit of internal rotation. That's a pet peeve of mine. Um, then we got like... Clearly. Act- I know. It just really does annoy me. Um, activation stuff. So we got like hip lifts, leg lowers, um, quadruple hip rocks. Um, adapter rocks, quadruple T-spine rotations, bird dogs, cool, that's all gone. One set of each, be happy with that, easy. They can do two if they really want to. I, uh, with other people, I do the big three, so um, back fit pro. What's what's Doctor? What's his face? Back the back guy, Professor Shoot Miguel. Shoot Miguel, thank you. Um, he does the big three, right? You can go look that up. You know exactly what they are. Your homework, bam. Um, do you know what they are? No. Oh, brilliant. Oh, thanks, Dan. Gee. Sorry, mate. Side plank. Yeah? Yeah. One of them? Yeah. And we've got a curl up. Don't know what a curl up is, mate. Curl up is basically you, you've got one leg um, in a kind of a, a bridge position, but like not bum, and then one leg straight out. And you do massive breath out and you curl up your thorax. So you're just raising up. It's like a banana. A oh, crunch. Not an crunch, no. <laughs> <laughs> you have to hold it and you're not coming all the way up so yeah you got that one and then you've yeah. got a bird dog yeah cool. bird dog I mean yeah when it's bird dog classic classic then you've got mobility circuit so you might like ankle stuff toe touches lateral squats single leg RDLs wall angels blam one set of those go and then then we start moving so that's probably already 15 minutes um, yeah I was about to say yeah so the, thing, the thing is here Tommy you're describing a massive really long session <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's what it is, but it's not. It's not. Um, like then you got like knees to yeah. chest, leg cradles, heel to butt, pop and float, pogos, high skips, high runs, heel ups, back pedals, reverse lunge, um, reverse reverse lunge, crazy. Um, and then you got like med ball plyo core, which is like pick three things. Med ball plyo core. Not not the, our sister podcast, which is. Carry core conditioning. Carry conditioning. I knew. Yeah, There's yeah. a recall. <laughs> But yeah, that was that's another number four for personal trainers who uh, want to get I don't know, just have like a specialism. Be like, I'm shit hot at warm ups, and then that's good. Yeah. That would be your specialism. That would be my specialism. I'm shit I'm hot at warm ups. Get ready to train, but not training. <laughs> I can get everybody so primed to train, but uh, yeah, then I just stop and let them do what they like. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, I mean, and the last one, what's what's that last than a be a simple thing? We've got to end this now. We're getting close to 45 minutes. I don't know, mate. I'm, I mean, I'm going to say liquid calories because it's generally a thing that I talk about with people now. Is, is that still a thing? I need to talk about it. It's totally I, still a thing. Oh, God, I really need Unreal. to get out of I, I had to discuss this with one of my chaps today. I've been training for a while. And uh, he was like, yeah, I'll get it. Like, he was like, where can I lose the calories in my day? I was like, all right, well, what, what's what's that? What's the coffee? He's like, because obviously I was like, yeah, I just go black coffee when I'm dieting. I don't just, I just don't bother because I don't have to track that. Like, it's just water basically. And I'm like, if really, it's like five calories or whatever it is, but it's not worth tracking. And he's like, what? And I was like, well, what would you have? And he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll have a small latte. And I was like, does that mean flat white? He's like, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was like, okay, so let's look at the flat white on my fitness pal. Um, it's anywhere between 70 and 119 calories, depending on where you're having it. Um, so it's 120 calories. I'll go at the upper end echelons of like the Starbucks one. And he's right? like, yeah, I have six of those. And, <laughs> and he's like, no. And I'm like, yeah, 120 calories. So if you switch that like every day, right? What are we at? We're at seven. He's an accountant. And he's an accountant. You'd love him. Um, <laughs> And then these are 750 calories. I was like, that's 750 calories throughout the week. And if you and I was like, also, you do that on a commute. Would you just drink any drink that was put in front of you? He was like, probably, yeah. So mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be a flat white. It just needs to be something warm, I think, is the uh, thing. Also, if you don't really want to switch, I was like, just grab an Americano and have some, like, skinny milk in it. I was like, that's only going to be 20, 40 calories. And suddenly we've got 500 calories we saved. So that's a thing, Dan. It's still a thing. Um, liquid calories is massive. And we're two of the people. So I had a, uh, mainly because um, the order was wrong, I had to have a a full fat or full sugar cola. Oh, um, can you tell the difference? I, I don't know. I didn't have another one. I didn't have a diet next to me. So 
I, no, like, I just think I, I, feel, I could tell if I had it. I could tell. I reckon. Yeah, I, I feel like I definitely can, but I'd have to have it both in front of me to really think. Um, the other thing but, about the liquid calories is I saw the other day that there was a big article, and I can't wait for it to come out because it will just prove that it's fucking pointless. That um, the sugar tax basically has caused a lot of companies to reduce the amount of sugar in their drinks. They're saying how it's working. They're like, oh yeah, it's working because companies are now making sure that they put less sugar in all their drinks and all this sort of stuff. And I can't wait for them to be another report saying that obesity rates continue to rise. <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, brilliant. It's nothing to do with sugar, that's why. But yeah, that was just uh, on that. I just noticed that. It, again, people don't, it's not making a difference. Like it's, you know, because it's things like that with like, with the coffees and stuff like there's a sugar tax and i get it to a point but it's like yeah but people add full fat cream to hot chocolate they kind of fucking know that that's the like you could add calories to a drink and it doesn't have to be sugar and it's still fucking people up in terms of their diets it's like come on and yeah i think sometimes we forget people don't know that sort uh, yeah, of stuff it's, it's, but these are the things that the, our as trainers you guys are listening and you can still talk about these things because 100 percent the clients don't probably know or you can st- that might be a golden nugget for them to be like the penny might drop on certain simple stuff that we just talked about cool yeah. lovely mate it's Dr. Zero yeah I had a bit of Fanta Fanta Zero today lovely run out, run out of my uh, other stuff um, so yeah mate all wonderful 45 minutes 46 just went over apologies guys mm-hmm. um, you have to walk to the office and listen to us alright um, any other news no no same all good (laughs) all right we will catch you guys next week see you later